Hello, I'm John King, and I'm going to talk about farm profit, production, pollution, and risk. So what creates risk? This is a great quote by Australian Tim Hutchings, whose work has challenged embedded beliefs that maximizing production reduces risk when in fact it's accumulated losses. What he is saying is that what's best for the industry is not necessarily what's best for the farmer. So to demonstrate the relationships between profit production and pollution, this chart uses the work of Barry Riddler and his farm analysis program, E2M. The example uses diminishing returns for nitrogen use on a bull beef operation. And so this is how we construct that. So this is the uh, nitrogen, sorry, this is the production before the nitrogen being used. This is the cost of that nitrogen. This is the income uh, that's being produced by uh, the nitrogen. And of course, if we minus the cost, we get the profit. And if we color in the production, we can see where the production is being maximized, the profit is actually declining, and that's mainly because of, of, um, of rising costs. So there's always tension about who wants to be where on this chart, so let's have a look at who is where. So if you're a, a productionist, like a soil scientist or an agronomist or even a fruit rep, you want to be all the way up here at 100 kgs of N, um, because that lifts production right to point T. Uh, now, this is the behavior that encourages excess fertilizer use, higher greenhouse gas emissions, maximizes sale commissions, and luckily for farmers in New Zealand, uh, they can rely on the fertilizer rebates to feed their families here because they're not going to make any money, as you can see. Point S, okay, Riddler states many in input-output models average total income and costs, creating point S, which coincides here at 65 kgs of N. This is where you know, those with vested interests want to be. Point S produces more grass than point T and may make more money, but definitely not for farmers. In fact, farmers make much more money earlier where additional cost for every kg of nitrogen equals additional income created by. This is at point R. In other words, up to this point at 42 kgs of nitrogen, every kg of nitrogen is making more money than it costs. Whereas after this point, it's costing more money than it makes by steadily eroding previous profit gains. Now, environmentally, after point R, pasture response to each kg of nitrogen declines. And this unused nitrogen contributes to increasing nitrogen loss problems like greenhouse gas emissions and, uh, and, and leaching. Okay? It's your money that's creating this pollution. Few professionals and farmers grasp these relationships, therefore it's ignored like a woolen carpet. As Riddler observes, tipping point, which is R, is where marginal costs equal marginal income, it pinpoints the optimum financial return, but only if farmers can make money from this additional pasture without adding other costs such as extra livestock to eat the grass rather than improving the performance of existing animals. So what creates the risk? Well, let's look closely at the profit differences between point R and point S. So in here, okay, this is point R, this is point S, okay. Point S is often uh, created by outdated farm management and environmental software like Overseer, which averages data, meaning farmers miss accumulated profit over time. And that's what increases the risk. Now, the other point, of course, is that whether the industry knows it or not, it uses data at point S to lobby government, not only to allow farmers to pollute, but also to reduce their profits. And it just so happens that the reduction in farmer profit coincides with higher income for suppliers who often support the lobbyists. The risk for farmers comes from lower profit and higher costs to deal with policy from industry ignoring the overuse of nitrogen. This heresy is what's costing farmers. So the surprising consequence of focusing on optimizing profit is a reduction in pollution and business risk. Now imagine if bankers, policymakers, and environmental scientists became interested in this relationship. What might the industry gain? Barry's one-liner is simple. If you get your economics right, then the environment will follow. I'm John King, and if this video has stirred any interest or curiosity, then by all means, give me a call.